Well, as folks will remember, a decade ago after what happened in Newtown at Sandy Hook, for a moment it seemed like there was some bipartisan consensus that uh, Washington could uh, compromise on common sense gun safety measures, including simple, straightforward measures like universal background checks that almost 90 percent of Americans, people of all stripes and political ideologies, support. And then that didn't happen. And in the intervening decade, incidents like this and similar incidents, whether you want to talk about, um, you know, what happened last week in Buffalo or El Paso or in other schools in these last 10 years, have become so common. Uh, they have become who we are as Americans. And, you know, my only hope is that, unfortunately, that if something comes of this, it's that some of those politicians who couldn't find the moral courage to support even something as simple as universal background checks find that courage in the coming days to do that so that we can at least get on a path of making gun violence less and less likely in our country. What, what, what the gun lobby, I mean, we hear the NRA is, you know, is, is, impl is imploding, and there were a lot of people who thought some were happy, some were not, that the gun lobby may not have the sway that it once did. But from all that I hear on Capitol Hill and from our colleagues who cover it, it does. Well, and it's built that up over decades, as you know. And, uh, but I do think there's been progress. Look, I came up in politics in Texas. Uh, I started off as a council member in San Antonio in 2001, served as mayor for five years, starting in 2009, have watched this issue develop in the state and, of course, like all of us in the country. And there was a time when I started in politics here in Texas where even Democrats would basically cower at the NRA, even if they agreed with things like universal background checks and other common sense measures to curb gun violence, they wouldn't make that an issue. They wouldn't talk about it, wouldn't put it on literature, wouldn't really address it at town halls, tried to shy away from it. And then that changed, especially after Newtown, from places like Texas to Florida that, you know, some folks have referred to as the gunshine state to all over the place. So Democrats have been united, at least in that. And I think that more and more that moral courage is moving out toward people who represent swing districts and hopefully to some Republicans who are going to decide that um, it's more important to make sure that we curb gun violence and do it in a sensible way. You know, nobody's trying to take away folks' guns. People understand that the Supreme Court has said that individuals have a right to bear arms under the Constitution. But uh, we can do it in a more sensible way that keeps our children and keeps our families safer. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that we're going to see another moment where perhaps with a Congress that will act, we have a president that will sign some common sense gun safety legislation. Well, the Texas Attorney General, I don't have to tell you, Julian, Texas Attorney General said today we need to arm all teachers in America. Is that, a, is that something that you would support? Absolutely not. That's not the answer. Look, uh, you know, there's this myth out there that having more guns is going to make us safer. And let's admit, look, a lot of regular Americans, you know, they see an incident like this. and I, I have a, a son who is a first grader. Uh, there are folks that think, hey, you know, do I need to go out and buy a gun? And a lot of people have, right? And do we need to have somebody that's armed at the school? More guns is not the answer. Whether you're talking about that Walmart in El Paso or that Topps grocery store in Buffalo last week or many of these schools where kids have been victimized, there were armed guards there. There were folks who were carrying on those campuses that did not stop the shooters from showing up and mowing people down. And that's not the answer. The answer is to make sure that uh, these weapons don't get into the hands of people that shouldn't have them. And also, I believe that we curb the type of weapons that they can use that make it easier for them to kill people very quickly and very efficiently. These assault style weapons, high capacity magazines. There's another problem, Julian, and we all know it. You mentioned the Walmart in El Paso. I remember it vividly. I was on the air when it happened. 
And that Walmart in El Paso was the target of someone who wanted to, wanted to murder brown people. He went to a Walmart on a day that they were getting school supplies for the new school year, knowing specifically that that was a Walmart that people came across the border from Mexico to do the kind of shopping that they could not do in Mexico, knowing that the, victim, the potential victims, and indeed the victims, would be people of color from south of the border. We know it happened there. We know it happened at the top supermarket in Buffalo, that we know that he was looking for black people to kill. We know it because he told us. So we, we also have to figure out a way to come together as people and realize that, you know, the color of skin or wherever we come from is not something that should divide us, but should remind us that that's the very idea of America, this place, this most diverse place in the world where people from all over the world can come together to seek the great American ideal. And instead, we're going in another direction. And how we get back to what this country is supposed to be all about uh, is, is, something, is a place that leaders are going to have to take us. And they're going to have to come from both the left and the right, from the Republicans and the Democrats. We're going to have to, to push, push back on the extremes and come together in some way where we can love each other and not hate each other for the color of our skin or wherever it was we were born. And, Julian, it's, it's people like you and others across Texas and across Buffalo and across El Paso who are going to have to come together and make that happen, and it's not happening. Well, I, I do think that you have uh, good people of all backgrounds, white, black, uh, Latino, Native American, Asian, everybody, um, more people of every group who want to see that loving community, who want to see a nation that values everybody uh, for who they are uh, and celebrates their differences and finds a way to be more unified and to have a common sense of purpose and identity. Uh, you know, what, what worries me today is that we seem to have one party uh, that is giving in to this path of hate and of white supremacy. And I saw Senator Rick Scott from Florida the other day on one of the Sunday morning talk shows. They asked him point blank, uh, would you tell your colleagues in the Senate to disavow white supremacy? And he wouldn't give an answer. He didn't say, of course I would tell them to disavow that. To me, Shepard, that was, they're going to very, very scary places. And I know that uh, people of all different backgrounds and also different parties, Republicans and Democrats, do not stand for that. And they should not let their leaders get away with that, or else we're going to continue to march uh, further along that path of division and hate and polarization, and and eventually we're not going to have the country that that we love, and we're not going to have a country that we recognize. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.